Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Codium for Vim. So I'm on the Codium website right now and I'm going to click Get Codium. Now note that Codium works with both Vim and NeoVim and the installation instructions are pretty much identical. In this video I'm going to use NeoVim but the Vim instructions you know, will play out in exactly the same way. So I'm going to click NeoVim and you can see that it tells us to go to our public Codium.Vim repo. So this is an open source repository we've put together and the readme contains instructions for installation and usage. So you can read the readme at your leisure, but a lot of the content in there is what I'm going to be describing in this video. So in, you have several different installation options. Um, there are some popular package managers for Vim and NeoVim, like VimPlug, which you can use to install Codium or you can install it manually. So I'm gonna start by demonstrating installation using Vim plug. Um, and later in the video, I'll show how to do a manual installation. So to install using Vim plug, I'm gonna first go to my init.vim file for NeoVim. And I'm going to add hexa function Codium.vim to my list of plugins. Okay, now let's edit a new file, call it fib.py, and remember to run plug install to actually install uh, our new plugin. Okay, great, it looks like Codium.vim has been installed. Now to uh, authenticate to Codium, I run Codium auth. And when I do that, it's going to open a browser and give me an authentication token, which I can copy and paste back into NeoVim. So I'm going to paste that token and press enter. Okay. So now uh, I am successfully logged into Codium. So let's try to actually use it. So I can write a function, my favorite function, def fib. And you'll see that Codium has given me a suggestion shown in gray here. Now to accept the suggestion, all I do is I press tab. Great, all right, that worked pretty well. So let's save that. And now as promised, I'm going to demonstrate installation manually. And this time, just to switch things up a bit, I'm going to demonstrate installation on a different machine, which I'm SSH'd into. So here I'm on a machine that I've SSH'd into and I don't have Codium installed yet. And let's say I don't use Vimplug and I want to install manually. Well, the installation instructions here make it pretty simple. I just copy this command, run that, and now I'm all set. So if I use nvim to edit a new file, once again, I need to run Codium auth. And this time, since I'm SSH'd, it says it failed to open a browser, so I'll need to copy the link manually. That's no issue. So I copy this link, visit it. It gives me the authentic authentication token again. I can paste that. Looks like I typoed it the first time. Uh, and now I'm in. So once again, I'll try def fib of n, and I get the same suggestion. But let's say I don't like this suggestion. Well, in vim, we have configured a command to see an alternate suggestion. So I can do option right bracket and view alternative suggestions that Codium has given me. So if I do that, I can see alternative suggestions here. And maybe I prefer this one. So once again, I can just tab and accept it. Okay. So that's just the start of the story. Once you have installed Codium, you're of course free to use it, but there's many different um, things you can do beyond this from here. So if you go back to our public repository, it describes some of the things that you can do. So for example, uh, we provide these the following key bindings, which I mentioned earlier. So tab is for accept, 
And you can see alternative suggestions via option left bracket and right bracket to toggle through them. We also have key bindings for clearing the current suggestion or manually triggering the suggestion if we don't automatically trigger it. And of course, all these key bindings can be um, rebound to keys of your choice. We can also disable Codium for specific file types uh, by setting the following variable. So for example, maybe you don't want Codium enabled for bash, you can set that to false, but you do want it for TypeScript. You can also uh, disable Codium altogether using this variable. Um, and maybe you only want to enable Codium manually at specific points in time, uh, which you can do with this variable. Another fun thing we have is we can show Codium, uh, Codium's current status in the status line. A lot of people have very complicated Vim status lines, and we support adding Codium's current status to the status line. And it can show you things like how many suggestions there are, uh, whether it's waiting for a response from the server, or whether it generated no suggestions. Um, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, this, this repository is open source. So if you see something that you think the community would benefit from and you want to make a change, feel free to submit a pull request and we will review it and merge it in. All right, that's all. Uh, I hope you enjoy using Codium in Vim or NeoVim.